Hi everyone, in this Lightroom tutorial video I have some editing secrets to show you. I'll show you the full edit on this leopard image and also show you a neat trick using custom vignettes, a saturation technique I use on most of my wildlife photos as well as many other worthwhile Lightroom techniques. Okay, so a few things I always start with when I edit a image is I normally use the Adobe standard profile. I normally come down to lens corrections and remove chromatic aberration. I do that to all of my images and then we will start working on this file. I think the exposure here is a little bit bright. The white balance is not very good. It's an old camera, so it shows a very odd white balance. So I'm going to cool that down a little bit there, and I'm going to raise the tint. Now that is going to bring in some much warmer colors there. Let's make this a little bit cooler, something like that. Then I want to drop down the exposure a little bit just to bring down those brighter sections of the image somewhat. And then what I like to do sometimes is raise the black slider all the way. I use that instead of the shadow slider a lot. I'm going to raise up my whites a little bit here. I want to bring back some of that nice contrast. And I will drop down some of these highlights. And probably raise the shadows just a little bit. I always use the shadows and highlight slider as little as possible. Now, there are some areas of this image that are very bright. Raising that white slider has made a lot of these areas too bright. So I'm going to go into the masking, I'm going to go into radial gradient, and I'm going to put a radial gradient over the face here. I just want to drop down the exposure on that very bright section, but I don't want to affect the darks. So I might just raise up the shadows a little bit just to counteract that darkening here. And drop down the highlights a bit there. So that's looking a little bit better. The mouth area is still very bright, so I'm going to throw on another radial gradient. Drop that exposure down there. And just a note on these radial gradients right in the beginning, is I often try to balance the exposure in a less global sense and more on a local area base on the image. So I like the overall exposure in this image, but there are certain areas that are too bright. So that's why I'm adding these radial gradients, just to counteract some of those areas. Like this area here, I'm going to drop down the exposure again. That area is a little bit too bright. Drop down the highlights a bit, maybe raise the shadows, just to counteract that darkening on those dark areas. And then I find this area of the face here is also a bit too bright. This image was shot with a spotlight, so the spotlight's shining on this general area here and it's making it very bright. I'm going to add another radial gradient. This time I'm going to subtract the sky. I don't want to darken that area around the ear there, so I will go into subtract, subtract and select sky, and that will take away that selection from the sky there. So now we'll just darken that down a bit there. So now I've darkened down those areas quite nicely, but now it's made the face a little bit dull. So I'm going to add another radial gradient on the face here. And I'm just going to raise the exposure just a little bit on that face. So you can see through the use of these masks, that's before the masks, that's after the masks. You can see we've dulled down those very bright areas and we've given more attention to the face. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to crop this image. There's some area on the right here that's not adding to the image and I'm being quite distracted by this area to the left of the frame. So I'm going to crop that out. I want to use a three by two ratio and I'm just going to crop that away there. Something like that, hit enter. What I want to do next is I want to soften the shadows a little bit and I use a technique that I call a black fade. And that's basically taking all the black detail in the image and just making it a very dark gray. So I'm going to do that using one of my presets. If you're interested in these presets, they are available via my website. And there are tutorial videos about each preset pack, which includes a discount code. So if you're after some new presets and want to save a bit of cash, there are discount codes in those tutorial videos. So I'm going to use probably this black fade here, the first one, and it's just going to soften those shadows a little bit there. It has raised the contrast in the brights, but I quite like that. I'm liking the overall exposure of the image. I like the punch, but I feel like the colors need some work. I'm not enjoying the color of the leopard or the sky. I want to 
darken down the sky as well and work on emphasizing the subject a bit more and that is the the eyes are the main subject in this image so what i want to do first is i'm going to come down into the hsl panel i want to change the color of this blue so i'm going to drop this down just a little bit here and i want to change the color of the leopard slack it's a little bit yellow so you can see there i'm just dropping the orange and the yellow sliders a little bit so next i want to work on the saturation i don't like the saturation in the sky the saturation on the leopard is okay so i'm going to drop down the saturation quite substantially on the sky there and i think the sky has got a lot of purple in it yeah you can see that purple slider is being affected quite a bit as well and just drop down this magenta a little bit and then i want to drop down the luminance of the sky i like the color of the sky it's just a little bit too bright so i'm going to drop that down a little bit there and you can see that really adds a lot to this image helps emphasize the subject really nicely so this is a before look at the hsl panel and this is after we've softened those blues and we've given the leopard a bit more of a warmer more orangey color so what i want to do next i want to add a little bit of color grading into the shadows i want to add a little bit of a blue tint into these shadows so i'll do that with this shadows color grading tool down here and I will choose the color around about there and a saturation probably around about there. And then I'm going to darken these shadows just a touch. And I want to bring in those blues only into the deep shadow. So I'm just going to adjust this balance slider a little bit here. Now I'm just going to go into the calibration tab. I want to just adjust this blue primary. I just want to bring in a little bit more color, just a little bit there. Very subtle color change. Now I want to work on emphasizing the subject more with a vignette. I'm not going to add the vignettes on this effects panel because I want to target specific areas and I don't want to use a generic vignette on this image. So I'm going to use a radial gradient. I'm going to place it over the face and then I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to affect everything that is red. So I'm going to affect the outside of the face. I'm going to drop down the exposure. And what I sometimes like to do for a vignette is drop the contrast because sometimes using just the exposure, it becomes too apparent that you're darkening that area. So I like to drop the contrast as well because an area of high contrast is more appealing to the eye and the eye will gravitate towards that high contrast area. So through a vignette, I'm darkening the outside plus I'm lowering that contrast. And then what you can also do because the eye is drawn to a more warmer color and a brighter color, I'm going to cool down the vignette very, very slightly. So this is the vignette before, and that's the vignette after. It's a very subtle change, but I might just drop that exposure a little bit more there. And then again, I want to darken just the top of the sky. I don't want to darken that whole sky. I want to have a vignette effect. So starting at the top and gravitating down towards the leopard. So what I'm going to do is grab a linear gradient, and I'm going to intersect that with the sky. I don't want the vignettes to affect the animal at all. So what I will do is I'll click and drag down. And you can see now that selection is going over the leopard there. But if I intersect that with the sky, you'll see now that selection will be removed from the ears there. So now I can darken that sky without affecting the leopard. So something round about there. And then similar to that, I'm going to darken this foreground just to lead the viewer into the subject a bit more. Something like that. I really like using these custom vignettes. It helps you target specific areas depending on where your subject focus is. I think what I'm going to do now, and this is a trick I like to use quite a lot in my wildlife photography, is I'm going to desaturate the shadows and then I'm going to raise very slightly and warm the highlight saturation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select luminance range, I'm going to select a shadow in the image, and then I will come down to the saturation. I will drop the saturation, not a lot. You don't want it to appear gray, but you want it to appear slightly desaturated and slightly cooled as well. Very, very subtle. So something around about maybe a minus 20 on the saturation and minus eight on the temperature. And then I'm going to create another luminance range selection for the highlights. Just want to come and see where it's selected here. And then what I will do is increase the saturation slightly. And what I might do is I might just change the tint on this 
slider here as well. Okay, that's looking good. I want to slightly desaturate the whole image. I think it's getting a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to desaturate it slightly. Maybe increase the vibrance just a touch. Now, one thing I've noticed is on these eyes, I want to bring out the clarity of the eyes, but I also want to eliminate the distraction that these very bright spots are giving here. Those bright spots are caused by the spotlight that we used. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a brush and I want to add some clarity to the eyes here. I really like the detail in the eyes here and I want to bring that out. And clarity is a great way to do that. Take this clarity slider, not too much, but probably around about 40 there. So I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to go into the spot healing tool and I'm going to use the content aware remove. It's going to zoom in a little bit more here to see this close up. I'm going to leave the one on the eye there. That's a nice catch light on the image. Just these ones on the outside that I'm going to remove. Just a simple click and drag. That's going to make a nice difference. I'm going to take this away here. Just going to simplify the eyes a little bit more and allow you to focus on that detail there. Grab that there and this here. Bright spots. I don't like this bright section on the mouth. I'm going to do the same there with the spot healing tool and using the content aware remove. I'm going to click and drag that. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the noise on the image. Just going to remove the sharpening for now. And an important note about using this new Adobe Denoise AI is if you are generating a lot of AI masks, it's a better idea to roll the Denoise first and then do the AI masks afterwards. Because sometimes after I've denoised the image, the AI is choosing slightly different areas. So because I didn't really do any AI masks in this image, I'm going to do the denoise now. So simply click this noise reduction denoise. I'm going to use an amount of around about 50. Click enhance. Let the DNG be created by Lightroom. And there we have the DNG file. What I normally do with the DNG file is I always just remove some more color on the noise. And then the last thing to do is to sharpen the image, view at 100%. And I normally sharpen at about 75 with the masking at about 60. Bring the radius down and the detail down slightly. Check out this video next and learn some more secrets to moody wildlife photography in Lightroom.